moment and just give God some glory. Come on, come on, somebody say glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for tonight. Thank you, oh God, for these precious people who have come out and weathered the cold, Father. Hallelujah. Bless me, your woman servant, oh God. Hide me behind the cross. I am emptied out, Father. I, I have prepared, I've studied, Father God. So I ask, oh God, that you speak. Speak forth the oracles of God through me, oh God. Lord, give me utterance tonight, oh God. And may my fruit remain. Hallelujah. We bless the service, God. We bless your name, oh God. We stir up the finishing anointing in this place tonight, oh God. We're going to go forward forward in you, oh God. We're going to hold on to your hand like never before, oh God. We're just going to run full steam ahead. Hallelujah, because the best is yet to come. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ah, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, y'all know how excited I can get. Y'all can be seated. I get real excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to take out and, and take off running too fast, so I try to easy back it up. Sometimes I, you know, I'm a singing preacher, so a lot of times when I'm preaching, I want to sing. When I'm singing, I want to preach. So sometimes I really can't make up my mind. I feel like singing tonight. I don't know. But anyway, we, we're going we're gonna, to um, dive into the word tonight. Amen. I pray that we just get through this thing. If you all give me your amens and give me your attention tonight, we're just going to coast right on in and get some things done. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to personally thank Dr. Chris and Pastor Amber for allowing me to stand tonight. I'm honored. I count it a high thing because there are so many represented in this room tonight. There's my sister, Reverend, and my brother, Bishop. I call him Bishop. And, you know, just different ones that can really preach and teach the word of God. But tonight is my night. Glory to God. So, hallelujah for the time that is mine. So, we're, we're just going to move on. And I'd like to welcome everyone that's tuned in live stream. Hello. God bless you. My prayer for you is that you get what you need through the computer or through your phone or whatever device you're using tonight. You get what you need. You just release your faith with us that you're going to be blessed tonight. Glory to God. There is a word from the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. I sense uh, just a real sweet anointing in this place. Glory to God. That word will be found in Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Very familiar passage of scripture, verses 1 through 13. We'll look at some other, other stuff, but when you have that, you say amen. Or better yet, say word. Mm -hmm. This is the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins. So uh, we've all heard uh, this, uh, this account. We've all read and studied this. Very familiar with it. So I'm going to uh, start reading Matthew 25. Verse 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise, five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps, took no oil with them. Somebody say no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed. They all slumbered and slept. Come on, ain't that how we do when we don't think something's going to happen? We'll go to sleep. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all of those virgins arose and trimmed the lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, no lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, my God. And those who were ready went, went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins also came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Verse 13 says, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the son of man is coming. True. It's true. How many of you know that this particular parable is talking about the second coming of our Lord Jesus? And 
talks about us being about our father's business because we don't know the day nor the hour when he shall come. But yeah, listen, he is coming. Glory to God. He's coming. Hallelujah. I, I, I didn't really struggle with what to talk about tonight because Dr. Cody always helps me so much with my sermons. Glory to God. He got us all stirred up in connect class on Sunday talking about staying the course, finishing the course, staying your course. You know, when a lot of people don't finish, I want to finish. I want to finish all that God has put forth for me to do. I want to finish and I want to do it right. I want to do it right. I want to be pleasing to God. Amen. Got me all stirred up when I looked at, and I don't have this in, in uh, the scriptures that I gave you all, sirs, back there. Hebrews 12 and 2. Look into Jesus, the author and what? The finisher of our faith. And as we start, we're what? Seven days into the new year. You know, people have made resolutions. I stopped doing that a long time ago because I just set myself up to fail. So I don't do resolutions, you know, I do some tweaking. I do some spiritual checkups. I kind of do like an inventory of, of where, you know, I've, I've kind of gotten off course. Come on, I'm human. Think I'm going right and going wrong, brother. So I do like a spiritual checkup. Yeah, because I want to finish. I'm going to do right. I want to do right. Amen. I want to experience the fullness of the blessing of God on my life. I'm going to experience all that he's promised me. Glory to God. So I do a spiritual checkup to look at some things in my life that, and then I, I, I begin to reevaluate. But check this out. There has to be a start before there is a finish. I want to finish my course. I want to do what I need to do right. And I want to get on my course and I want to allow God to help me grow up while I'm on this journey. Because my, my, the, the seasons will change. My surroundings will change. What it took for me to start will be different than what it'll take for me to finish. I'll, I'll end up in a different place. I'll end up stronger. I'll end up wiser. But along life's journey, we're, we're on a journey. It's a, it's, a, it's a walk. And we all have our personal, individual journeys that we have to walk out. I can't walk yours for you. You can't do mine for me. I got to find out from God what he has for me to do. And I got to walk that thing out. He don't show me the whole picture. He showed me bit by bit, piece by piece. Amen. And that's where faith comes in. I got to, I got to trust him to take me. He's he. And a lot of times, listen, I know he's done you all this way too. I've been led to some hard places on my journey and kind of wondered, am I in the right place at the right time? God, are you even there? Do you see what I'm looking at? Do you see what I'm going through? He says, yeah. Yeah, daughter, I got you. I got you. Yeah. And he always does. So the title to the night's message, real easy. Plan to finish. Yeah, plan to finish. Simple as that. Plan to finish. How many of you know that it's not the people that start that gets the prize? It's people to finish, right? Thank God for your starting. Thank God for you starting over. Come on and thank God for me starting over and over and over and over. But how many of you know you don't really want to live your life starting over all the time? You look up and where's Crystal? Well, she's starting over. She's starting over again? Is this her 10th time starting over? Listen, I want to get it right. I want to get it right. Yeah, I want to do it right. I want to do life right. Yeah, however, that some of us have started the race, but we're no longer in full stride. Mm, can I talk to y'all tonight? And we've, we've dropped out. We've dropped back. And we know some people. We know some people that are really closely connected to us who have fallen back. They're not running like they used to. They can, but they don't. What got them off course? What's got them sitting back? What have they put their focus on that's got them off track? Yeah. They've fallen back and fallen out of the race altogether. It's extremely sad when we see a person no longer walking with God. No longer. They've made some, uh, 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 some, some adjustments in their life and they've got so close. And you're like, you're rooting for them. And then they, they don't want it. They don't want what the Lord has. That's, that's, that's sad for us to see. They turn away. They backslide. And God spoke to me as I was 
preparing this message, he said, some are sitting in my church in a backslidden state. I say, yeah, God. Yeah. We've become lukewarm and leave our first love. When we look at the ones that have turned and gone back, we see that they all have had one thing in common, doctor. That one thing that they've had in common is that they did start right. They started out right. They all started. Amen. Started out well. But somewhere along the way, for some reason, they make, they make a, a silly decision and they turn away from God and they no longer want to live this blessed life of holiness but there's something watch this about how you begin that will enable you to finish it's your attitude come on do you want to do you want to finish God says better is the end of a thing than the beginning glory to God what's your motive behind starting what's your motive behind starting sometimes I have to ask myself When I start a new thing, am I just trying to impress people? I'm just keeping it all the way real. Can I talk about me tonight? Glory to God. Glory to God. But it's all in your attitude. What's your real motive behind starting? Watch this. We're in Matthew 25, but I want us to look at Galatians 5 and 7. Galatians 5 and 7. When you have it, say word. Galatians 5 and 7 says, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Who hindered you? The backdrop of this scripture right here, Paul was addressing the church at Galatia that that had some of their membership actually stop doing what they had started doing. And in spite of their excellent beginning, something had gone wrong. Someone had hindered them. Well, today it's the same pattern that's running rampant. Among people that we know, people today feel that, oh, I don't need to go to church. I can get everything I need off the TV. Yeah. But the Bible says, come on, somebody say the Bible says the Bible says in Hebrews 10 and 25. Come on, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the matter of some, but exhorting one another. So much the more as you see what the day approaching. Mm hmm. That's true. That's Bible. But the spirit of deception will have people believing that they don't need to go to church. They don't need to go to Bible class. The Lord will say to us tonight, come on, you started out well when you got saved. You were at church every time the door was open, but who hindered you? You used to be faithful, but who hindered you? You used to read your Bible, but who hindered you? You used to fast, but who hindered you? You used to sing on the praise team, but who hindered you? You used to testify of my goodness. Who hindered you and shut your mouth? Who hindered you? You used to be the first one at church and the last one to leave the church. Who hindered you? You used to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, but who hindered you? Oh, Zion, what's the matter? Now you don't even pray like you used to. Ugh, my God, what happened? Who hindered you? Glory to God. We are instructed to lay aside every weight. And weight and sin. Not every weight is a sin, but every sin is a sin. And pull you off the plan of God. So you got to make those adjustments and don't let the little things along your life's journey so easily beset you. We need to get the mind of God for our journey tonight and be strong enough to withstand the changes when they occur along the way because they will. They will occur. Your scene will change. Seasons will change. People get mad and leave you. Come on, Dr. Cody. People will get mad and leave you. They'll get mad and leave the church. Come on. All of a sudden, they serving with, a, with fervor and vigor. And all of a sudden, where they at? Where they at? Where they at? What chain? What who hindered? I'm not talking about people that leave, right? There's a way to leave. Yeah. Yeah, there's a way to leave. Yeah. But I'm talking about just all of a sudden? Just drop off. Where, where they at? Can't get them to co- return your call or, or, or anything. Watch this. We need, to, we need to walk our life's journey out with the mind of God. Watch this. Isaiah 46 and 10. This right here is so good, y'all. I put this in the God's word translation. I don't know if they can find that, but watch this. Watch this. Let me read it. Isaiah 46 and 10 says, 
From the beginning, I revealed the end. Am I the only one that want to run off of that verse? From long ago, I told you things that had not yet happened, saying, my plan will stand. And I will do everything I intended to do. Yeah, when we go in our life's journey, when we go through life's journey, that should be our confession. I'm going to do everything that God intends for me to do. I'm going to fulfill my destiny. I'm going to fulfill my call. I'm going to go where he wants me to go. I'm going to shut a door when he wants me to shut a door. I'm going to open a door when he wants me to open it. And I'm not going to grumble. I'm going to do it. Because he wants me to. If we take an inventory of our lives tonight. Ooh, and I did this and I was like, Lord, have mercy. How many things did we start last year that we did not finish? Okay. All right. All right, moving on. And when we look at the passage of scripture, okay, I'm in Matthew 25, yeah, uh-huh. We, we, we looked at, uh, at the fact that 10 started out, but only five finished. Yeah, yeah, looking at the 10 virgins, it looked like they all started out right. They all looked apart. They looked religious. They looked like they had themselves together. They all had their lamps. But five of them... There was something that was lacking in their planning. There was something that was lacking in what they were doing. There was something that was lacking in in what they had to have that causes them not to finish the race. Hmm. Paul talks about a fellow worker who was once with him but left him. His name was Demas. He said in in 2 Timothy 4 and 10, and you don't have to put that, you don't have to go to that. It says, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Yeah, yeah. I'm convinced that these 10 bridesmaids, these 10 versions, they they left to meet the bridegroom. They had, when they left to meet the bridegroom, they had full confidence that they would make it. Yeah, yeah. They believed that they left with good intentions, fully expecting to make it to the end. You expect to finish your course. You expect to finish your race. But some of us may not finish if we get our eyes off of Jesus. Who is, like I said earlier, the author and the finisher, right? Right? But what we have to do is stir up within us the finishing anointing. Hallelujah. That anointing to finish. That's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Come on, put that up there. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Paul says, watch this. He said, I have fought the good, worthy, honorable, and noble fight in the Amplified Version. I have finished the race. I have kept firmly held the faith, fought a good fight. What a shame it would be to fight 20, 30 years and at year 31 get disqualified. I was thinking about just some instances in my own life when I was uh, in a very, very horrible, abusive relationship. I stayed in that relationship, brother, seven years. I didn't know who I was, Pastor Amber. I didn't know. I wasn't going to a church like this. I'm not downplaying, you know, any other teaching that I had, but I did not know who I was at the time. So I would start. I'd leave. And then I'd do what? Go back. Leave. Go back. I'd start. Didn't finish. Start. Didn't finish. Until one day, I fooled around and got a hold of uh, Romans 8 and 37. Nay, in all these things, you're more than a conqueror. You're more than this. You're better than that. You deserve better than that. Than somebody beating you up over your head. Somebody calling your names, belittling you. You're the apple of my eye, daughter. Come on, you're the head and not to tail. I had to let the Lord minister that to me. And that, that is when I finished. I walked away and never looked back. You know what? And this is the, this is the wonderful thing about our God. And when I see that young man today. Well, he's older than me, but anyway, when I see him today, you know, I look at him as if it never happened, as if I never, no sting, nothing. At first it was, it wasn't like that at first. First, you know, I was seeing him, I'm like, ooh, I want to just slice his tires. Well, I did. But now when I see him, Sister Karen, he's crying. I don't blame him. (laughs) Uh, yeah. 
you know what I'm saying? But I, I've had to tell the brother, look, I, I've, I've, I've already forgiven you for what you've done to me. I, I'm taking no account of that. You've moved on. I've moved on. That happened. Yes, it did happen. It was horrible. It did happen. But I finished. I got away. <laughs> Woo! I got away. Hallelujah. And I got away. I got away. Because I, I, I'm just thinking, just get, taking an inventory. It was during the time I was so depressed. Had such low self-esteem that every day I woke up, I got mad. Every day I woke up, I mean, I got mad. Mad because I woke up. Mad because I'm like, oh, I'm still here. Try to think of ways to end it. But then I had two beautiful little little kids that kept me going. And thank God for that. Thank God. Thank God for that. I'm here. <laughs> I survived. I won. I finished. Glory to God. Watch this. Uh, when we look at the five, we'll go back to Matthew 25. When we look at the five that didn't finish, there's a mentality that has crept into the church. And when I say church, I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Amen. It's a mentality of chasing things. Chasing prestige, chasing position, chasing popularity, chasing things that won't last. It's okay that you have things. It's all right. But come on, but you can have things but not have the anointing. Come on, you can have prestige but not have the anointing. Come on, you can have position but not have the anointing. You can have all the popularity but not have an inkling of the anointing. What you have to do to, to run your waist, you, you have to have the stickability, right? Yeah, you have to have sustainability, and this is what I call it. You got to have that come hell or high water, I'm a tough it out ability. I'm toughing it out. I'm toughing it out. Yeah. I'm talking about the finishing anointing. I'm not talking about you being a great wonder and everybody knows your name and you ain't really living nothing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the anointing to walk in love with those who despitefully misuse you. Come on, people that don't even like you just because you let God live big on the inside of you. I'm talking about you walking in love with those type of people, loving the unlovable. Come on. I'm talking about the anointing to live holy, the anointing to live clean. Yeah, I want to finish this thing. The anointing to be faithful to your wife. Uh, ooh. Yeah, I said it. I said it. I said it. I said it. To be faithful. The anointing to be faithful to your wife. I'm talking about the anointing to be honorable to your husband and not talking back to your husband and quit having a slick lip with your husband. I'm not married, but I see things. Can I move on? I'm sorry. No, I'm not. This is, the, yeah. The anointing to be honest. Come on, I'm talking about the anointing to love God. The anointing to finish. There's anointing for holiness. Come on, Minister Marilyn. There's an anointing for us single ladies. Come on, there's just certain places I can't go. There's certain conversations I can't have. There's certain phone calls I can't pick up. What you doing calling me at 1 o'clock in the morning? Well, we ain't talking about nothing. We're not talking about the weather. One o'clock in the morning. Uh-uh. Delete. Ought to be asleep somewhere. There is an anointing to live single. I'm very much alive. That's all I got to say. I'm alive. But there is an anointing to live a life of holiness. Glory to God. You know what I'm talking about, sister? You and some, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Glory. Hallelujah. If your desire is to be kept by God, he'll keep you. <laughs> I'm a living witness. He'll keep you. Jesus. Even when I didn't want to be kept, he kept me. Am I being too transparent? Y'all looking at me like, yes. I'm not, I'm not telling you anything I've read. This is what I live. Yeah, he'll keep you if you let him. He'll keep you. Yes, he will. He'll keep you holy. Keep you honorable. Keep you clean. Come on. Certain things you can't watch. Certain things you can't do. Certain conversations you can't have. God is a keeping God. Hallelujah. And watch this. God is not impressed with you talking about starting. What is that we say? I'm about to. 
I'm getting ready to. I'm fixing to. Now just watch this. I'm finna. I'm fin to. God is not impressed with that. No, we're not impressed with that. Watch this. Ten bridesmaids went forth with purpose to meet the bridegroom. When they went forth, intending, intending to meet the bridegroom. They went forth with their lamps with expectancy. And we know that the bridegroom represents Jesus. Amen. They took their lamps. Yep. They took what they needed and they went to meet him. This signifies a journey. This signifies our life's journey. Amen. Things will change along the way. The five that were wise didn't know that the bridegroom would tarry. But they pulled up on the wisdom of God to know something. I, we need to take some extra. Or shall I say extra? Extra. Some more. <laughs> and the other five was like, they just, they being bougie. They just so super pseudo spiritual. We don't need all of that. Oh, yes, they did. Oh, yes, they did. Come on, those five wise plan to finish. The text says that five of them were wise and five were foolish. Five were wise and they were sensible. They were prudent. They thought about where they were going. They, they thought about where they had to be. How many of us, when we got up this morning, we thought about what we would wear? We thought about the coats and hats and all this other stuff we have to put on because it's cold outside. We thought about if we had enough gas in our car to make it to where we were going. We thought about coming to church. Listen, it's just life is full of thoughts, of thinking about planning, doing things. Amen. Like, you know, in, in uh, March, we're, we're thinking about going to the ladies conference. We're, we're planning. Some of us are putting aside money. Yeah. Some of us are looking at some bad shoes to wear at that conference. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but yeah, you know, we like, we women, we like stuff like that. We like frilly things and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We like to look pretty. In our spiritual race, we, we also need to plan. We see in the text that it says five of the bridesmaids took extra. Or the five of the virgins took extra. And the other five didn't. Five did not put any thought into their journey. It's just going. Just going. Just doing. They, they took just enough. And that's how some of us do in the spirit. Just enough. They all looked alike. But they did not, all five, five did not plan to finish. They took just enough. The lamp is the vessel that carries the light, but the oil keeps the light going. Mm -hmm. The oil signifies being full of God's spirit. Come on, there's nothing to draw upon when you're empty. Nothing. Nothing when you're empty. Five looked like they had it together. Five looked like they had it all uh, figured out by the outward appearance. Five of them came to church. Come on. They made the profession, they, they for, but they forgot the most important thing. They didn't take extra. They didn't take the extra. They had a little oil. They, they come to church, pick up a little bit in service here and there, do just enough to get by. When they go home, don't study, don't pray. Don't believe God for anything. Yeah. You don't plan to finish. You don't plan to finish. Pastors can't do it all for us. We have to stand on our own. They've taught us that. They put enough of the word of God in us for us to finish. They motivate us to finish. Amen. Amen. You know, I tell people this all the time and it was not too long ago, it was a couple of weeks ago, I was just sitting around just chit-chatting with some friends of mine, and we were just talking about life's journey. And I was like, and this is true, salvation is free. But it'll cost you your life to serve God. And they were like, clutching their pearls. Huh? Like I said, something that was horrible. You mean I got to die? Yeah. Yeah. You died of your desires. And you replace them with what God has put in your heart. He'll give you the desires. You just push your things to the side. And those things that you really, really believe in God for, he'll bring those things to pass. As long as you stay on his side, amen, do what he have you to do. It cost you something to finish, brother. I was thinking about, I was just like, you know, in preparing this, I was like, yeah, I want to finish. But it's going to cost me the rest of my life. I'm sold out. I'm at the point of no return. I don't have anything to go back for. 
Nothing. I'm done. There's plenty of things in my life that I can stand up here and boldly declare that I will never do again. I'll never touch again. Don't need to touch again. Because it had me off course. Had me crazy. Foolery. Shenanigans. All kind of silly stuff. I don't look at that stuff anymore. I don't do that, those type of things anymore. Don't even let my mind go there. Yeah. Yeah. They keep that old woman caged up. What? Buried. Move. No, that's not. What? Where's that coming from? I had to cast it down. Yeah. I, I'm not her anymore. I'm not her. Yeah. I'm washed by the blood. Hallelujah. The foolish bride maids did not have their oil in their lamps to finish. And when you don't have oil in your lamps, you can't see. And when you won't pray in the Holy Ghost, you won't have clear direction. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you, when you come, won't come to midweek service, fill up on the way. I call it Wednesday night fill up. Yeah, it's just a, we just stop through, fill up, and keep it moving till Sunday. Amen. Look forward to it. Look forward to getting my charge. Amen. Just a little extra to help me finish out my week. Amen. Successfully. Glory to God. Won't come to midweek service. Won't come to connect class. Just don't take the journey serious. Really don't want to finish what you're saying. Yeah. We know that Jesus is coming back and we've heard it for so long that, that we start to, to live in loose, getting off track. Oh, they've been saying that for years. Yes, we have. And we're still going to say it. We're still going to tell it. He's coming back. He's coming back. You better be, you better be working. You better be ready. Glory to God. He's coming back. We don't know the day nor the hour, but he's coming. Glory to God. We don't have the attitude of, of one that's at attention. Come on. We don't have the attitude of one that's pressing into God. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Amen. I, I, I just want to exhort you tonight just for a few minutes. Glory to God. Be, be like the five wise virgins. Be like them in Matthew 25 who, who, who were prepared when the bridegroom's arrival was announced. Come on, stay full of the oil of the Holy Spirit with your light shining. Hallelujah. Don't get caught sleeping when Jesus returns. Come on, wake up now to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let him put on the inside of you and, and get you and keep you on track and get you ready for the Lord's coming. Because just as Jesus foretold. There is a cry going out at midnight. Hallelujah. Amen. We got work to do, church. Come on. The spirit of the Lord is announcing his return. Can you hear it in your spirit? Can you sense that the Lord is saying, yes, yeah, stay on course, stay on track. This is World Harvest Finish Church of Paducah. Come on. Yeah, we plan to finish. We're going to finish. We're going to finish this thing. We're going to finish the things that are in, in our individual lives. Glory to God. Amen. You got to get that light in you now. Right now, it's crucial. It's a crucial time, crucial hour to be on God's side, to be about our Father's business. Hallelujah. Come on. Sometimes I, I may not be confident in certain areas. Every now and then I may mishandle adding up my and, and balancing my paycheck, my checkbook and all of that. Every now and then I may respond wrong in a heated situation. But you know what? I'm confident in this one thing. I'm confident, I'm confident that he that started a good work in me, come on, he shall finish, he shall complete it. Come on, why don't you stand on your feet? He shall finish, he shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Come on, God says, I will perfect that in you which concerns me for your good. And for my glory, hallelujah, Christ, <laughs> Jesus. I, can I just talk about Jesus for a moment? Come on, he's the alpha and Omega. He was there in the beginning. Come on. And he'll be right there in the end. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah. He is the totality. Amen. I'm talking about Jesus. He is the sum existence, some substance of all the scriptures. He's fulfilling the end of the law. Come on. He's found in the first verse in Genesis. Is he now? He's also found in the last verse. <laughs> Come on in Revelation. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the one that they hung. I'm talking about the one that, that hung, bled, and died for your sins and for my sins. Glory to God. They hung him high. Yeah. They sh I got my Baptist preach coming on. Come on. They stretched him wide. Glory to God. Pitched him in the side. Hallelujah. And then he said, I thirst. I thirst. I thirst. And right after that, he said, it 
is finished. Come on. It is finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I stir up the finishing anointing in this place tonight. Oh God. Uh, oh God. Just stir us up tonight. Father God. To finish our race. To finish our course. Father God. Those things that you have set before us to do. Oh God. I declare by the spirit of God tonight that we shall finish in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You are dismissed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't flat preach myself happy. Glory to God. Glory to God. You can be dismissed if you can. <laughs> or we can just stand around and praise God. It doesn't really matter to me. Woo. Hallelujah. Come on, finish your course. Come on, finish your race. All those things that God has spoken to you. Come on. Listen, even though 2014 has ended, it doesn't mean that some of those things that had not come to pass, it don't mean that they won't. Come on, pick those back up and run in 2015 with the fervor and with the zeal, with the passion. Hallelujah. And go on and finish your course. Yeah. Because I'm finishing. I'm finishing. There's some things that I have yet to do. I, yep, 2014 ended. And there were some things left on my list. You think I'm just going to let them die? Picking them right back up. And I'm running with the fervor, with the zeal, with the fire. I got the name. I got the blood. Hallelujah. I got the anointing. I got the power. To keep going. Hallelujah. And I got his word. Hey. Woo. Come on, y'all. Let's go home. Glory to God. I done already dismissed. Woo. Those are number three. You know. That, that's that Baptist in me. That's that Baptist in me. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah.